of the morning. You guys haven't had coffee yet, right? We had coffee three or four hours ago. We fought the traffic. We showed up here. We got to have a show. And who better to bring here than an old friend of mine who was with uh, companies like IBM and CA, and those jobs were too boring, and he wanted to change the world. He's a guy who regularly goes to Davos and the World Economic Forum. He travels the world. He, he goes to Africa. He's been in Turkey. He's been in Spain. He's even been in Italy, where they have a crisis. Um, anyway, next up is my old friend, who's the CEO of Wise Technologies. Now, Wise, how many of you remember? I know most of you are less than 35. How many of you remember the green screen VT220 terminal? Raise your hand. OK. This company is still around, folks. It's called Weiss Technologies, but they don't sell VT220 terminals. They sell thin clients, they sell software. It's a successful company, and Tarkan has repositioned the company, growing it profitably, throwing lots of cash, growing it 50% a year. Please welcome Tarkan Maynard. Thank you. OK. All right. Emma, where are my slides? I have 150 slides for you. No, I'll do a lot of these events, and I'll love them, uh, especially. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Again, I do a lot of these things and travel the world, and I'm blessed that uh, 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 we have that uh, uh, capability and the time. And I never had this many email exchanges with any event organizer. <laughs> I swear. <laughs> 15 people are emailing me from NASCAR, and I love them. And every time I answer, I get 15 new emails from every single person. <laughs> so we are so well prepared. I have 150 slides. Every slide is reviewed by every single person at NASCAR. I love the team. I love NASCAR. <laughs> Big hand to NASCAR. <laughs> By the way, where is Avinash? Where is Avinash? He's in the back. Whatever problem you have, if you confuse all these emails, just send an email to Avinash. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to give you his home number at the end of the, my presentation. <laughs> <laughs> I love you, Avinash. He's crying from emotion. Anyway. I know you guys had a phenomenal day yesterday. Uh, I heard fantastic presentations. Vinod was here. I heard he did a great job. And the rest of the presentations, a lot of slides, a lot of technology talk. And actually, when we were discussing this uh, uh, presentation, this session specifically, there were a lot of ideas. I think there are tons of great people talking a lot of different uh, uh, topics, technology trends. This is a technology event, right? Not, last time I checked, NASCAR is all about technology. And uh, in 30 minutes, obviously, we, not, we cannot cover everything in life and in technology, in high tech. We just wanted to have a quick discussion, a high level discussion, to open up more discussions maybe later today, later in the month, later in the year, and into the future. So that's the goal a little bit today. I have no slides. I'm just going to uh, have a conversation with you. And hopefully, toward the end, I'm having about half an hour here, maybe be carve out about five minutes, MR, you come up over here, we have a conversation with the folks in the audience. So um, first of all, I'm going to fire my CMO. We are gold sponsors with Red Hat and Tally, and our name is number three. We should be on the top because we want to sell a lot of product here. We want to sell a lot of product in India because India is going to be a phenomenal market. In the beginning, in the last 10, 15, 20 years, a lot of focus in India was because of uh, uh, employment, finding low-cost employment. Let's be honest. That was the goal for many Western companies. But now that game is changing. Now this is becoming a phenomenal market opportunity for many, many companies in the West, and as well as in the East and domestic for you. And I know there are a lot of vendors in the, in the audience. So we cannot have any kind of conversation about mega trends or innovation or technology without overall economic context. I think that's very important. And that's what one of the topics we were discussing through those 15 people exchanging emails with me 15 times a day. As we're having these conversations in NASCOM, at these type of events, in India specifically, the topic has to tie into to contextual uh, issues around economy and, and, and so, social movement. Because you cannot innovate without context. Innovation has to be planned and contextual. And after the innovation, you need to have execution in a contextual and planned way. I'm going to give you a few examples about that, what I mean in a second. First of all, I am the CEO of a, of a bankrupt company. Let me explain what I mean by that. When I joined in 2005 WISE, by the way, WISE stands for W-Y-S-E, basically Mr. Wu, Yi, and Bernie Say and his wife, four people, that's why there are four ticks underneath, started in 1981 in Hong Kong by four founders, three gentlemen and the wife of the, one of the gentlemen. 
And that company was a great success, public, private, public, private. In 2004, completely bankrupt. In 05, we just made an investment and took the company private. This can be a Harvard Business case study by itself. So the company was a bankrupt company. $50 million in revenues, 17% gross margin, nearly $90 million in OPEX, and losing $100 million a year over year. If you have a little bit of financial background, you know this is a screwed up company, right? And I'm the CEO of the company. Glad to be here. My presentation is over. Thank you. So I'm going to talk about why it's a little bit at the end. So just put that into a parking lot in your brain. OK? That's the number one context. Now, now I'm here with you all to tell you there is a similar crisis at a macroeconomic level in the world. I don't know if you watched the CNBC this morning uh, on your TV. Probably you were in the traffic stuck for two hours. Uh, 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 typical Bangalore traffic is getting worse and worse. Hopefully it's going to get even better. And there's another context we're going to discuss in a second from an innovation perspective. Very important. There's a huge crisis in the world. And, and uh, if you watch the news today, Greece is going through a lot of you know, uh, uh, issues, as you know. And now we have uh, Italy, as Imar suggested, has a, a major issue. Uh, um, and, and Eurozone is going through a very, very difficult time. In, a, in our interconnected world, that creates a lot of risk, obviously, for the world econo economy. At the end of the day, today, when you look at the world economy, 70% of all economic activity and purchasing is still coming from the West as of 2011. But in the next 10 years, that 70% is going to switch side to East as you might have read books and you're uh, going through this kind of an economic velocity yourself in India, you're expecting 70% of that economic velocity is going to move from the west to east, as we all know. There are different numbers from different analysts and economists, but that's pretty much around the high level. 70% today in the west moving 70% to the east. Within the current context of, of economic uh, 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 velocity around the world, the fact what's happening in Eurozone and what's happening in the US, it's a obviously big challenge for the East, for countries like India, for countries like China, for countries like, like uh, uh, obviously Vietnam and the other Svets countries in the uh, uh, emerging uh, economic regions. There's a big concern. That is the reason, that is the reason, is hugely important that domestic consumption and domestic innovation in the emerging market have to actually accelerate. And actually, that risk creates a huge opportunity. And one economist was saying actually yesterday, and it was very interesting, uncertainty and crises are gold mines, are the best times to innovate and create more consumption and more economic velocity. Because at the end of the way, the world economy is going to grow next year, in calendar year 12, 4% year over year. That's a huge growth rate when you look at the world as a whole economic region, the entire planet. And most of that is going to come in the East and some of these emer emerging markets, like the BRIC and plus sweats, like the Colombias and Indonesias and Vietnams, even Egypt with all the political uncertainty they're going through, Turkey, South Africa, and so on. When you look at the G20 today, out of G20 countries, there are seven of them are these emerging markets today. And that number is going to probably going to grow over the next 10 years. So this context is hugely important for any kind of an innovation or tech discussion. Any tech innovation without this context, I believe is doomed to fail. We need to understand the economic overall context, then we innovate. Then we innovate in any space, from, from, from biotech to tech to, to, to uh, uh, green energy, whatever that might be. Hugely important. And techies, nerds like us, sometimes you forget that. This is hugely important. And this is one of the topics that I was actually exchanging emails with the NASCAR folks 15 times a day. In this kind of an event, even though it's a tech event, that economic context becomes so hugely important because successful innovation versus failure is going to be based on that context. Now, when you think about innovation, I'm going to get into the innovation and some of the mega trends that the way we see it, it has to be so contextual within the context that you live in. That's hugely important. And let's think, uh, think about that context for a second from an economic platform and social platform. When you look at a country, a country as a whole, take a look at India for a second. To create that economic platform for more innovation, you have to have a few things in place, first of all. Number one, a common infrastructure. 
common infrastructure. Think about it like a temple. The, the foundation is all about infrastructure. And that infrastructure are the roads, are the bridges, are the tunnels, are the smart grids and the networks, the cell network, the, the telco networks, as well as the infrastructure for better food supply, water supply, and waste management. Without those things, you can innovate all day long. But if you don't have the infrastructure, you cannot take that into the execution to create more economic value. Hugely important. With that infrastructure in mind, then you can deliver a better, better level of education, environment, energy policy, and obviously, very importantly, healthcare policy connected to better financial system. Without which, you can innovate all day long. Without the stable financial system, you cannot put the money to execute on that innovation. This is hugely important. And obviously, national security on the top of that temple. Without the stability and national security, you cannot take that innovation into execution. And in a stable economy, in a stable society, you can deliver more value. These are hugely important components for better innovation, planned innovation, and obviously contextual execution. So those are the topics I think going to be hugely important, especially in emerging markets. Because if you have bad air, bad roads, bad education system, bad healthcare, bad infrastructure, and bad water, and bad waste management, that innovation is not going to flourish into the future. Hugely important. So having said all this, within that context of economic development and platform to innovate better in a planned way and execute on that innovation in a contextual way, there are a few mega trends that you've been hearing in all these talks. Even in the panel before, everybody talks about the same thing. Social, cloud, big data, and what was the fourth one? Mobile. Completely agree. You can buy a Gartner report for 100 bucks, and every single Gartner report starts with the same page. Don't buy. I'll, I'm giving you free. OK? Social media, right? We all, all know, our, our, obviously, it's a huge deal. It's a big deal. Cloud, obviously, is a big deal. That it is a public, private, or personal cloud. And obviously, mobility and consumerization of IT through mobility is a huge, huge, huge big deal. And obviously, last one is the big data. When all these three things come together, obviously, we're going to have tons of data, tons of rich media, and a lot of opportunities there. But let's peel the onion a little bit from an innovation perspective. The area is hugely important. When these megatrends, let's assume these are the megatrends, come together, what becomes very self-evident that the most of the opportunity are going to take place both at the infrastructure layer and the application layer in the areas of virtual data centers, networks, and ultra-thin, ultra-green, thin devices. Whether those devices are desktop devices or laptop devices or, or, or mobile devices or even embedded devices. We believe in the next 10 years, we're going to have about 50 to 100 billion devices in the world. And most of those devices are not going to be necessarily connected to, to, with a cable to a wall. They're going to be untethered in some shape or form. From your GPS system in your car, to your embedded de device in your, in your uh, uh, watch, to, to your home appliances, to your smart TV, beyond the typical desktop, laptop, and mobile device. So that's a fact. We all know that. Those devices, how they connect to the network in the back end and to that cloud service through the virtual data center, obviously a huge story. So now we're drilling down with the, with the overall $100 Gartner you know, uh, 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 mega trend story from the big data to cloud to social media and, and mobility. Now we del delivered and drilled down a little bit to virtual data center networking and ultra thin devices. Now let's take that to the next layer. Where is the real, real opportunity? Obviously, security, huge, huge deal, as it's been for the past 30, 40 years since World War II. It's going to get even more important. Anything in security is going to be a huge deal, especially in this new world of embedded ultra-thin ultra devices where they connect with firmware, not OS, with very thin firmware, sometimes zero firmware, to a cloud environment, to big data, through these crazy networks. And you did not even see the security issues in this world yet. It's going to be a big issue. Manageability. Manageability of that virtual data center to network to these thin devices. Huge story. Huge issues, huge risks, and huge opportunities. Availability and reliability of data available to those thin devices. Because when the devices get thinner and crazier and all over the place, which means all the data goes back to the data center and you have to connect it to it 24-7. That connection creates huge issues around reliability and availability. 
The next up, the big issue and big risk and big opportunity is obviously total cost of ownership. How we make these innovations in a way that helps the user, whether that's an enterprise, small, medium business, a large enterprise, a government, or the consumer, and help those people who are going to use the stuff and move the issue of total cost of ownership from a CapEx model to an OPEX model. Huge, huge, important trend. I was having a conversation with the CIO of US government, new CIO, Stephen Von Reichel, $80 billion budget for US government. And those IT vendors here, you should take a note, $80 billion budget, or $80 billion budget a year. And he has to move everything from a CapEx model to an OPEX model. So that freemium discussion is hugely important earlier from this panel. And there are going to be tons of opportunities for those vendors, whether those infrastructure innovation or application innovation, to focus on that kind of a model. What kind of a business model can you deliver from an innovative perspective, not only from a technology perspective, but also how you deliver your business model? Because innovation is not only in the tech in bits and bytes, also in the business models, as we all know. And we don't know some of these business models, how they're going to turn out in the next 10 years. So huge opportunities and risks. That's why there's a huge opportunity. When there is a risk and uncertain, there's an opportunity and there is margin, right? When there's complexity, when there's risk, there is margin, there is opportunity, and SI, systems integrators know that very well. They charge for it. They create complexity to make it simple rather and charge for it, right? That's what they do. That's what IT did for the past 50 years. We created complexity and then we solved it for more money, right? That continues. So to make long story short, when you look at the CapEx to OPEX model, there's going to be huge opportunity, especially for those entrepreneurs who are thinking about innovation from infrastructure to applications around these areas, like security, manageable, the availability, reliability. The next piece is obviously hugely important is scale. A lot of technologies built in certain ways will not help their customers scale faster. As a company, when I do acquisitions, I'll make sure the technologies I look at from an innovative perspective can scale for the future. It's written in a language, it's coded in a way, it's designed in a way, it's database architected in a way, it's customized in a way that it will scale, not only for a million users, but it's gonna, it's gonna uh, go up to uh, hundreds of million users. How can we innovate and scale to a billion users? Hugely important. So next up, with all these things in place, that we see huge innovative opportunities, both in the business model and technology, is contextual intelligence. Today, when you go to Google, or whatever search engine you choose, you type whatever you type into the search engine box, you usually get the answer to the question of what. As we move forward, contextual intelligence help us, will help us to get answers not only for what, but who, why, where, when, and how you want those answers to tabulate it by the system. Now imagine that kind of an infrastructure for knowledge management process done in a contextual way to answer all these questions in one answer or vice versa. Ask multiple questions and get multiple answers in one way and make it as fast as possible. And we're going to see tons of opportunity in contextual intelligence. Again, going from security to manageability to availability and reliability to total cost of ownership moving from CapEx to OpEx model, scalability and finally contextuality. In a contextual way, providing knowledge and intelligence to the applications and the infrastructure. And hopefully doing all these things in a context with social media, cloud, obviously mobility, and in a big data way. Tying these things to those four mega trends is going to make the big value creation for those entrepreneurs in an innovative way and in a planned way. And obviously in a way that you can execute on it at the government level, company level, and also user level, and at an and, 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 and entrepreneurial level. Having said all this, beyond any of these th megatrends or any other Gartner IDC report you're going to read, in all these different la layers of the innovation can take place from infrastructure to apps, we believe there is going to be tons of opportunity still in every area around customization. Let me explain what I mean by that. Even if there is an area there is an innovative idea or execution done, just like social media with Facebook, there is still tons of innovation opportunity available, customizing and focusing in areas in different dimensions. Let's think about these dimensions for a second. Number one, geographic dimension. I travel the world 
and I'm blessed on that as my company also is growing very fast and I see Facebook models in every country and you never heard of and Facebook can never succeed in those countries because they don't understand the culture and the context going back to the contextual intelligence going back to the contextual innovation and planned innovation and contextual execution best example for you anybody Russian from here anybody from Russia in this room anybody not one they don't come to Bangalore they should the best weather so there's no one. That's great. So we can talk behind them. <laughs> so in Russia, there is an uh, application called Contactia. It's basically contact in Russian. So now all you speak Russian. Fantastic. It's the best Facebook competitor, same model, same idea, but done in a Russian way. And nobody uses Facebook. Everybody uses Contactia. And Facebook is going to have great, great uh, problem to get into that market. It's completely contextualized and regionalized. So think about geography. Whatever other countries do can be geographized and customized in every country. And many of you in the industry know that. But there is still huge opportunity in that space. Whether that's infrastructure or application innovation around security, manageability, availability, reliability, capex to e opex movement with TCO and business model opportunities or scalability, or contextual intelligence opportunities at the infrastructure and application level. From an innovation perspective, huge opportunity in customizing the application or the infrastructure story into the context of that geography. Huge opportunity. Number two, customer type. Large enterprise, mid-size enterprise versus consumer. Act differently. Huge opportunity to customize the technology to that kind of a level based on the buying behavior and user behavior of the buyer. Large enterprise, small medium enterprise versus the consumer. And third one is my most favorite, innovation opportunity. And I see some examples of that in India. Some, but too few. Has to get better. And I think there's a huge opportunity in India in innovation in this space. And I'm not giving you the typical mumbo jumbo from a US perspective. This is the Indian perspective for you that you need to figure out how to tie in. That's the verticalization of the innovation. Every single vertical industry acts differently from public sector to private sector. Think about retail, telco, manufacturing, Financial services, even within financial services. You're a consumer bank, you're an investment bank, you're a private bank, you're an insurance company. Different contexts, different ways of using infrastructure, different ways of using applications. In a frictionless business world, everything is simple, boom, boom, boom. We have to move fast. Those verticalization and customization means a lot and changes everything. I'm investing in a company right now. It's a small company, zero revenue. I'm losing all my money right now. But I believe that company is going to kick ass in a big way. You know why? Because they verticalize the applications in a way. They do SAP, Oracle, all those ERP stuff in two clicks. Via mobile phone, in that specific industry for healthcare, nobody can touch them. Nobody will touch them. And with no revenue, they're going to probably solve for hundreds of millions of dollars with that kind of an innovation. Because the people who are innovating know that industry and the process flow and workflow better than anybody else. So think about it. When you're innovating, talk to those vertical specialists. Hire a vertical specialist. If you're doing education, hire a teacher. If you're doing healthcare, hire a nurse. If you're doing your government applications or infrastructure, hire some kind of a mayor or an ex-government official. Talk to them all the time. There's a huge opportunity in verticalization of any innovation. That's why when we think about this innovation permutation, sky is the limit. There's tons of opportunity in every single space. That's why those big companies who's done so well are doomed to fail if you innovate fast in that vertical, verticalized, geographized, and customer type way. Think about that, very important. There's a huge important story around all these mega trends and then mini trends we talked about from the virtual data center to network to ultra thin devices. Now we're talking about contextual intelligence, security, manageable, the available, the reliable, and TCO from CapEx to OpEx model and scalability opportunities from infrastructure to app. Now think about those customization, so to speak, dimensions around the geography, customer type, and obviously very importantly around verticalization of those apps. Huge opportunity, tons of opportunity. And the barrier to the entry is zero. So for those people who are all worried about the economy, crisis, oh, I don't have a job, screw you. There is no crying here. There's tons of opportunity. And this is the best time, this is the best time right now to innovate and create wealth, especially in countries like this. And there is so much opportunity every day. Since there's so much risk, so much uncertainty, 
Everybody is all ears waiting for that kind of an innovation. The key thing is how we contextualize it and customize it. That's the key. And do it in an executive way. Execute on it in a contextual way, within the context of the country. That's why we have a session later on today at 2.30 p.m. with the Zoho founder and myself. I think a, a, a few folks are going to uh, join us at 2.30. And the key story is going to be all about how can we innovate in the context of India, not only for India or not only for the U.S., but for the entire planet in a contextual way, in a regional way, and take it out in a vertical way, depending each on each vertical itself, from public sector to private sector, whatever that application could be or should be. So those are some of the highlights that I want to share with you. Now, for a minute, let me share with you a little bit about WISE. Because I didn't come over here 10,000 miles only just talk to you about megatrends. I want to sell you WISE. I'm here to sell you WISE. Let me tell you, I'm going to fire my CMO. I sat down to this cool guy right next to me. I think he left. He is the CEO of Hireplug, hireplug.com. Where is that guy? He left? Oh my god. He, he left. I, I'm, I'm, I'm just going, can I see the agenda? He goes, I said, what's, what's the next session? He goes, this Tarkan Manor guy from Wise. I said, do you know that company? He goes, I have no clue, man. <laughs> I said, I'm spending all this money here. You're investing all our lives. I'm putting from my pocket money into India and Bangalore. And this guy is so cool. He has you know, this MacBook going on, typing fast, listening to the panel. He doesn't care about the panel. He only knows what the panel is all about. He's showing me like emails going on back and forth. He's going to be acquired in the next you know, uh, five months. He's traveling the world. Very cool guy. He's probably 16 years old. He just left. So he's timing and he, he looks at my card and he goes, oh, you're wise. Okay. He's not even worried. The guy just like completely disrespected me. And he leaves. I hate the guy. Actually, I'm going to hire that guy. I like the attitude. Anyway, so this guy was Hireplug. Hireplug.com. Check it out. I, I think that guy owns me right now. Owns me big time. Anyway. He was talking to me, and he goes, wise, and he has no idea. I'm like, but you're using Mac? Yeah, he goes, let me check out our website. He goes, he looks at my website, wise, da, 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 going great. And then he goes, let me do some searches on you. We're not listening to the panel, by the way. The guys behind us were yelling at us, shh, you know, be quiet. <laughs> but the same story, the story, Amar, you know, cloud, social media, and we went through that. So, so, um, so as I'm talking to this guy, I'm thinking about how am I going to invest in his company? You know, I'm just trying to buy this guy out. He goes, no, 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 you know, we're just getting a lot of offers right now. I'm coming to this valley next week. I'm going to meet a lot of people. I'm trying to convince him to come see me in my headquarters. Anyway, he left. So to make long story short, <laughs> before, besides firing my CMO and branding issues that I have at Wise, I'll tell you, as I was listening to the guy and, and thinking about it, and he goes to this, uh, uh, some kind of blog forum, that's why the, you know, news media, uh, media business is in complete change, right? Paper business, newspaper business is complete uh, 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 kind of a, a, a uncertainty crisis. And there's a huge opportunity there as well when you think about it from that vertical perspective. Um, as I'm listening to him, I realize, I realize how fast our business is changing. And then he shows me this blog. And some guy blogged, basically said, you know, cloud computing is not necessarily the future. PCs are going to survive. And he's trying to show me, he's trying to prove me that in real time, he can tell something you know, confrontational to me, right? Smart depends, right? I'm not 16 years old. So he showed me this blog, you know, uh, cloud client computing, and what Vice does basically, is going to be over, you know, PC is going to be. In. Basically, let me explain what's going on. We hate PCs. I am anti PC guy. So from Dell to HP to Acer, Lenovo, common, the common story on all of them, they hate me. So I'll tell you what the story is here. And I know there are some PC guys in the room. At the end of the day, with all these trends and innovation opportunities, one area that we're focusing on as wise over the past 30 years is to eradicate the need for the complexity. IT business, IT industry has been a mafia business for the past 40, 50 years. By the way, <laughs> Vivek Kundra, CIO of US government, partially left the government because he was so honest about that. So IT community finally said, you know, we need to get this guy out because he's trying to cut cost. When there is complexity, there is margin, you know, just like mafia in Sicily. You know what do they do? They come, hey, MR, you need protection tonight. <laughs> you know, they go on. You need protection tonight. We need to protect you. MR goes, for what? You will see. You need protection. <laughs> so what happens? MR pays money to get that protection, and nothing happens to MR. <laughs> Same thing happens with IT industry when you think about the last 40, 50 years. We create the problems, and I've been part of that mafia as well, working with large companies. You can see my resume. So we create the problem, we create the, all the complexity, and then we go, hey, if you buy my software and hardware, I'm going to fix the problems. Well, it's like selling flood insurance in Sahara. 
create all the PCs, all the hard drive, all the applications, security, manageability, backup, security, all the issues related to it, and then sell tons of software to manage the problem. Look, that game is over. That's the reason PC industry is going through a lot of rough times. That is the reason over the past 30 years, as wise, we reinvented ourselves. Going back to the mega trends, looked at the opportunities in a vertical, customizable way and said, we can change the game. That's what you're doing at WISE. So from, a, from an innovation perspective, from a WISE perspective, that $50 million company, 17% gross margin, $90 million OPEX, losing $100 million year year year, today, revenue is nearing $500 million, our gross margins are 50% and we're a hardware company, but we don't have one hardware engineer. We sell hardware with software built in. All software developed here in India, in China, and in the US, 24-7. And it's not a cliche story, you know? India, R&D, da, da, da. Look, world R&D to me. Doesn't matter where the location is. At the end of the day, innovate as fast as possible, have the customer intimacy, listen to the customer, because without the customer feedback, how can you verticalize, customize, and give what customer wants in a frictionless business world? Everything has to be so simple, so fast, so frictionless. Click, 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 you're done. If you have more than three clicks, you're dead. So how can you do that? Unless you listen to the customer, you can't. That's why customer intimacy and operational excellence. You cannot just go out there and all day long innovate and spend money. At, at, the, at the end of the day, it's a capitalistic world. You have to put the innovation and make the investments on some kind of a profit at the end of the day. That's why freemium is great, but at, this, at the end of the day, there is no free lunch. At the end of the day, there has to be some kind of an innovative business model to get that revenue in. That's why the excellence in operations is hugely important. So the boring stuff, spending time with the customers, most vendors don't do. They just innovate in their own world. Product managers think they are the gods. They innovate constantly internally. Look at the Lego company in Denmark, toy company. Have you played Lego? They bring 5,000 kids to Denmark every year, lead them in a garden and ask them, innovate and create and dream about the toys you want to have. And then they develop the products, the toys, the kids want to have. As simple as that. In IT industry, we still don't get it. We think all in this room, we are all big schools and background, and I've done this MBA here and MBA that, all the you know, double E's and resumes. Let me tell you, we suck, okay? In IT, we suck. You know why we suck? We don't still understand what the customer wants. Few companies really you know, broke the barrier and figured it out. We still are learning. We're still behind the automotive industry. We're still behind the toy industry when we innovate. That's why hugely important how we democratize innovation with the customer. Democratize it to the customer for them to innovate from it. Because a customer has more product managers. Every user is a product manager for you at the end of the day. Hugely important. At WISE, over the past five years, we democratize our innovation process. We let the customer innovate for us and tell us what to build, and we build it for them. And what, once they see what we build for them, they want to buy it, not from a competitor, from you, because they were the product managers for it. So hugely important. Make it in a way it's, it's democratized, customer intimacy, and operational excellence, so you can, with that operations, fund the innovation. So IP innovation, hugely important for my company, and change my company. So on that note, last point. This economic crisis, and everything is going on, all the doomsday scenarios, every single thing in the world, da, 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 forget. Huge opportunity. The world is going to grow 4% year over year next year. A lot of opportunity in India, and a lot of opportunity here in Karnataka and Bangalore. Big time. But innovation in a planned way. And execution of that innovation in a contextual way, within your context. Don't try to be Steve Jobs. Steve Jobs is on his man. Become your own Steve Jobs. We're going to be innovating in your own world, in your own context. That's going to be the differentiation, the real differentiation, the real opportunity. Having said all that, having said all that, I love, and I finish my, usually my speeches like this with a, with a, a, a quick anecdote. One of my favorite, favorite, favorite uh, 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 founding fathers is Benjamin Franklin. He always said, and this is a hugely important for my company, we use this as a motto, he always said, People in the world are in three categories, right? One, one of those categories are the people who are immovable. They never move. They're unflexible. You cannot move them. Second category, those people who are movable. You can move them. They can move anywhere you want them to move. And third people, third category, the people who just move. Not just move themselves, but others with them. So I believe in innovation, in economic velocity, you have to belong to that third category. You have to move. 
regardless of the economic certainty, risk in the world, you got to move very fast, very fast, with guts, with resilience, and obviously with a plan, with a plan, with a contextual execution idea and innovation in a planned way at the same time, bringing those together. So that's my story. I'm going to bring MR here for a couple of questions because we're time up. MR, come up. Let's see. You're, you're a huge guy. I can uh, see oh that. So, yeah. so tell, tell me two quick, uh, two quick questions. So you talked about big opportunities. Are there kind of more manageable opportunities? I mean, what do you mean manageable? Uh, you know, the way you said, take a vertical. I mean, I'm going yeah. backwards, right? Yeah. Take a vertical and go from there. Yeah, let There's me, some better wor uh, ones and, you know, tougher very ones. Very good. I, I think I see the biggest opportunity is underserved markets, right? Opportunity is where the problem is. Whenever you see the problem, there's an opportunity, right? It's so, it's so simple. Sometimes you make the things more complicated, especially in our industry, in IT. We like things complex, right? It's our history. Simple things. Biggest opportunities, in my opinion, is in government. Governments today suck in terms of operation. We need good governments, right? We need governments. I'm not one of those people who say, we don't need any government, like the Tea Party thing going on in the US, which I hate. Look, we need <laughs> government. Who's going to build the roads? Who's going to build the schools? Who's going to have the teachers? We need government to support certain things. Of course, we don't have government everywhere coming in everything and you know, you know, creating cra crazy things in, in your private life. So we need better government. Government needs better help. Guess what? US, $80 million uh, uh, budget uh, every year, and huge opportunities even in the US. And they have ton tons of technology. And 80% of the technology in the shelves, huge opportunity in your government. Because there's also a lot of bureaucracy and a lot of problems in India from a governmental perspective. Think about the opportunities in the cloud, big data, and all those kind of stuff. Contextualize it. The second thing, within government context, education, very underserved, huge opportunities in education, and great give to get model. Give away stuff to make sure education works and the revenue will come back to you. And guess what? Those students in education are going to be future employees for you. Bribe them now. Give good technology, <laughs> huge opportunity. And the third thing I see a lot of opportunities is environment and healthcare. Those areas require tons of opportunity. Look at India. You're growing so fast. Look at Bangalore. It's like a construction zone, right? There's a lot of stuff going on. It's a good thing. It creates economic velocity, but also creates a lot of heartburn. What are the innovations you can do from an IT perspective to ease the pain for the government, local vendors, and anybody else in that context? So I see opportunities in those, not only in India, by the way, in all the emerging markets, also in the US. Great. Hey, Tarkan, uh, we're canceling the coffee break. I think you've kind of <laughs> pumped up the guys enough. And here's your gift. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Tarkan. Love and, you guys. Hey, and he's going to be here at 2.30, right? Your next session. 2.30, uh, we're going to talk about entrepreneurial yeah. innovation and so on. Fabulous. Right. Thanks, Thank Tarkan. Okay, now on with the show. We've got our next...